If you're a fan of unique, abstract, and just out of the ordinary fragrances, this is the video for you. Join me as I delve into En Salade by Marc Antoine Barrois. Hey guys, welcome back to Real Scent Review. Uh, tonight I'm going to be presenting a really interesting fragrance here. This is like nothing else I've ever smelled. It's En Salade by Marc Antoine Barrois. Now, a lot of times when we think of fragrance notes that can be considered exotic, like oud, maybe some really strong florals, smoky accords, very rarely do we think of things like rhubarb. And this one here really highlights a note of rhubarb, mixes it with other notes, and creates just a spectacularly abstract fragrance. So this one here is a collaboration between Quentin Biche and Marc-Antoine Barrois, the owner of the eponymous company. And if you're familiar with some of Quentin Biche's work, like, I don't know, the Kenzo Ohm line, for example, or Ganymede, also in collaboration with Marc-Antoine Barrois, this one here might not surprise you that much. You know, known for that spicy, fruity thing that he adds to a lot of his fragrances, and we definitely get that in this one. That's not to say it smells like any of those other fragrances, but we do get a spicy, fruity characteristic, and I'll be going more into depth about that later on. So briefly going to touch on the presentation. Really cool box here. This is the 30 milliliter bottle, by the way. It's a blue box. It has kind of a cardboard finish to it. It has a golden band around it. Kind of reminds me of like a cigar band. The box opens like so, and this is where the bottle itself lies. And inside of the box, there is a little booklet with some information about the company. Bottle itself here, cool. It's rectangular. There's a golden sticker on the front with the name En Salade. We have the Marc Antoine Ballon symbol on the top as well. Golden plastic cap, which comes off with difficulty. Plastic lightweight cap. But one good thing about this one is it does stick into place very, very snugly. So according to Marc Antoine Barrois and Quentin Biche, their inspiration for this fragrance was the legend of Enceladus, the mythical giant in Greek mythology, the son of Gaia and Uranus, who was buried under Mount Etna, and his angry breath can still be felt when Etna erupts. They also took inspiration from one of Saturn's moons named Enceladus as well. And this moon is known for the volcanoes that spew ice. So they have icy volcanoes that spew ice out into the solar system. Really interesting. And let's now get into this absolutely breathtakingly abstract scent. In the opening, I get rhubarb and vetiver. In the mid, I get leather. And in the dry down, I get vanilla and tonka bean. So the rhubarb in the top, it's very tart, it's bitter, it's green, but there's also a bit of a fruity kind of sweetness to this. Really interesting. If you know the smell of rhubarb, it has a very distinctive smell. So that's definitely what the top of this fragrance is going to be dominated by. However, there is a decent dose of vetiver in there as well. The vetiver is going to give it woody, grassy, and earthy characteristics. And also, there is definitely a smokiness to this, and I think it might just be coming from that vetiver. In the mid, we get some leather. The leather in this is dry, dusty, smooth, provides a darkness. And you know what? The leather in this might actually be giving off a smokiness itself as well. So far, we have a very unique smelling fragrance, and it only gets better. In the dry down, there's some vanilla and tonka bean. There is a dash of sweetness. It's not overly sweet. It's not what I would call a gourmand, although technically it might be a gourmand fragrance because vanilla and rhubarb are edible and they're both prominent notes. But yeah, the vanilla is going to be giving it a sweet creaminess in the bottom and also paired with that tonka bean, that the creaminess is going to be amplified a little bit and the tonka bean is also giving it a slight kind of nuttiness to go along with that creamy sweetness. Now, although there is definitely sweetness in the dry down here, I would not consider it to be a gourmand fragrance, although it does, like I said, prominently feature two 
technically edible accords vanilla rhubarb there's just something that that pushes it out of gourmand territory here with that vetiver it adds a grassiness and a definite bitter earthiness and a smokiness as well with that dark dry dusty maybe even smoky leather i find those things those characteristics pull this out of gourmand territory also there's something mineralic maybe even slightly metallic that hangs around in the background i don't really know where it can be coming from i'm not really sure perhaps the the earthy kind of soily tincture reminder that i get from that vetiver so all in all if i had to summarize what this smelled like in simple terms i would say it's a fruity tart earthy smoky creamy fragrance it's just so interesting. It's one of the most interesting fragrances I've ever come across in my life, actually. So yeah, despite its uniqueness, despite its use, its heavy use of rhubarb, which is a note that we very rarely find in fragrances, this actually does seem to garner more or less positive attention out in the wild. It's unique, it's abstract, but it doesn't use any notes that are traditionally considered to be challenging, for example. There's nothing animalic in this. There's no oud, there's no civet or castorium or, or anything like that at all. But it is, it's very different. A while ago, I did a review of Patchouli Koja by Nishane, which prominently features honey and there's some boozy characteristics and i went over in that review how you know nothing considered to be traditionally challenging but it's just it's so different than most other fragrances out there some people could perceive it to be slightly challenging and i definitely feel the same about this one here on salad this one here oh man it's so unique it's so it's so pungent it's really attention grabbing this this is a head turning fragrance so although it doesn't have anything like traditionally challenging like i said it's different it's very very unique most people out there probably have never smelled anything like this so having said that this is a little bit out there and i think that in order to maximally appreciate this fragrance the wearer does need to have at least some experience with perfumery you know not challenging at least in the traditional sense i still think that you know a beginner might not appreciate this as much as somebody who's been collecting for a couple of years at least you know what i mean okay so it is a unique fragrance however there are some bits and pieces that i can pick out throughout the lifespan that kind of do vaguely remind me of some other fragrances First and foremost, Shura by Rasasi. Definitely. The first time I ever smelled this, I was on a lunch break from work and I went to a department store and I sampled this one. And for the entire hour almost, I was walking around smelling this, thinking like, man, this is so freaking good. But it, it reminds me of something. Like, what does it remind me of? And then eventually it clicked. Like, ah, Shura by Rasasi. I definitely do get reminded of that one. But where... Shura has like very soapy florals and some tomato leaf in that one. Ancelot does not. There's nothing soapy. There's nothing floral about this one. But the way that the tomato leaf and the tobacco interact in Shura definitely gives me sort of the same impression that the rhubarb mixed with the creamy vanilla and the leather, you know, give off in this one here. So, I don't know, there's some definitely some connection to be made between those two, although I would not say that they are redundant. In fact, they're not redundant. They, they don't smell the same, they just give off a similar vibe. Also, now, they really, really don't smell similar to the Kenzo Ohm line, but I will say this, if you really enjoy the Kenzo Ohm line, especially the Eau de Parfum and the Eau de Toilet Intense, with that really heavy, spicy, fruity thing going on, you're probably going to also really enjoy this. If you enjoy the Kenzo Ohm style, let's say, I think this is also going to be right up your alley. So that's all I'm going to say as far as like comparisons go. But yeah, all in all, very unique fragrance. And I do recommend it if you do have some experience in collecting perfumes. So moving on to the price now. The price is definitely high, but it's not what I would call outright absurd. So on Fragrance Buy right now, 100 milliliters of this is going to run you 180 US. 
like I said, high price, but it's not like totally absurd, I wouldn't say. And here in the EU, there are multiple gray market sellers on the internet you can buy this from. The price seems to be absolutely uniform across the board, 195 euros for 100 milliliters as well. Now, now those gray market prices that I mentioned earlier, I think, like I said, they're a little bit high, not absurd. Why? Because the performance and the quality on this one are both out of this world. The performance especially, crazy performance. This will stick to your skin for 24 plus hours. Clothing, forget about it. You're going to smell this on your clothes for at least a couple of days. So be careful with your application. This is a monster performer. The quality as well is there. It is very, very well blended. It has a lot of depth to it. It has transitions. It's not linear. It's a really artistic experience. Not something I would recommend or consider for daily use. However, for a special occasion, maybe even a night out in the cooler weather, I think this could work really well. It's attention grabbing, you know, people are gonna ask you what you're wearing. It's it's that type of fragrance. It really, it just turns people's heads. It's, it's so unique and it's attention grabbing. So yeah, actually, now that I think about it, this can be found, the 30 milliliter bottle can be found, at least here in Europe, for a pretty decent price, like 100 euros, 110 euros. So I know in that case, the price per milliliter is not that good. But like I just said, the performance on this is so powerful. You're not going to use this up very quickly at all. And the fact that it's more of a special occasion scent, I think, you know, means that this is going to last a normal person pretty long time, especially if you have a large collection. You know, I know myself, I tend to collect smaller bottles because I want to be able to go through every single bottle I have. And I have a lot of them and buying a larger bottle because of that just doesn't make sense to me unless I can get it for like a really low price. But yeah, so I'm, I'm sure there are a lot of you guys out there who feel the same way. Larger collection, smaller bottle. Anyway guys, that's been my review of En Salade by Marc-Antoine Barrois. Truly a niche fragrance. Unlike anything I've ever smelled before, although it does have some, some similarities to fragrances I've mentioned in this video. Get your hands on this one if what you're seeking is an abstract, artistic perfume experience. Until next time, guys, keep it real.